there everyone, my name's Dave West, I hope we're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test, and today I'm checking out the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Now as with all ultimate video tests, I'll leave all of the main camera specifications down in the description, and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout this video to help save you some time. So as always, starting off with the front facing camera, and this is a 32 megapixel fixed focus camera, and this can record video at up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now there's only one mode available on the front facing camera, just in the standard mode, but there are some other additional options available, which I will show you in a moment. Now the Oppo Find X5 Pro has stereo sound recording for both the front and rear cameras, uh, but for the standard video mode on the selfie camera, there's no electronic image stabilization, as you can see here. But just do a spin around and just show you the surroundings. Now, one thing I've noticed is this front facing camera has quite poor dynamic range, so it does struggle a bit with bright areas of sunlight. But detail wise and exposure, it does a pretty good job. Now, to negate the lack of electronic image stabilization, there is an ultra steady mode available for the front facing camera as well as the rear. So this is a new addition from the Oppo Find X3 Pro, which I also tested. And this allows you to have more stable video from the selfie camera, as you can see here. The image characteristics are pretty much the same. So the dynamic range is still a bit lacking, but it's good to be able to have this option available if you want smoother looking footage. Now, one thing you can do is you can narrow the the view slightly as you can see just by pushing the the two viewfinder options so basically i think it's just cropping out a bit and then allows you to crop in just for a closer shot uh, but the difference is so small it's really not much that point to it now the final option available in daylight conditions for the selfie camera is this portrait video mode so there's no electronic stabilization in this mode but you do get a nice portrait cutout effect using this option. Now, it does look quite cutty-outy, if that's even a word. Uh, so it looks like I've been stuck onto this background, so you, but you do get a nice background blur effect, regardless of the fact that it looks like I've just been stitched onto some nice scenery in the background. And once again, the dynamic range really struggles, especially in brighter areas of sky. I know it is really bright. It's quite a high sun at this time of the day, but still, I would wish for some slightly warmer tones from the selfie camera when using these different video modes. So there's an additional option available which is AI highlight video but that really is better for nighttime conditions and I've done a separate low light test which will show you how that looks. But for the time being that is the modes available for this selfie camera on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. I'll flip everything around now and show you the rear cameras and what they can do. All right, so moving to the rear cameras then. There's three cameras available on the rear of the Find X5 Pro. You've got this 50 megapixel ultra wide angle camera here. You've got a 50 megapixel main camera, which is also exactly the same lens as the ultra wide camera. So they're both Sony IMX 766 lenses. And there's also a 13 megapixel two times optical zoom camera, which can go up to 20 times hybrid zoom. And all of them can record video, video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. So this is 4K 30. And as you can see, the ultra wide lens hand, handles changes in exposure really well, keeps everything nice and even across the board. So even when I point at the sun, it doesn't, darken the areas underneath it just keeps everything nicely exposed throughout now when recording unlike the find x3 pro which would allow you to change lenses as you go you've not got a slider on the screen so just move up to the main lens and you can see you get nice consistency with the video so colors and exposure are all nicely handled but I much preferred the 
the buttons on screen which would just allow you to toggle through the lenses as you were recording. But I'm just going to check out the autofocus from the main camera. Now, just a bit slow to get a lock on this subject here. Bear in mind, we're only two updates in, fresh out of the box with the Find X5 Pro. But if you are struggling, you can tap to focus and then that just keeps everything focused on the subject. Now, the main camera does have voice tracking. So if people are moving around in front of the camera, it will track their voice and keep everything nicely amplified through the microphones. And to just come out of that, then you just tap the screen again and then it will just focus on the entire scene. Now to give you an idea of the two times zoom, that's how far it will reach and then you can go all the way up to 20 times hybrid zoom. So you're basically getting two times optical and then a further 18 times digital but you can see the image becomes quite noisy and indistinct, so details are quite fuzzy. And then going all the way back to the ultra-wide lens. Now the ultra-wide lens does have some form of autofocus. As you can see if I just tap on this subject here, so it's a little bit shallower than the, the main lens, but nonetheless, it is something that's available if you need it. And if I just hold my hand up here, you can see that the background blurs out. And the haptics on the phone are really good. So as you're moving around, you can feel the haptics sort of click in on the phone as well. And this is 4K60 from the ultra wide camera. So you should see the benefit of smoother movement using this option. And it's good to see that the consistency between 30 and 60 frames per second is the same. Some phones, there's a noticeable difference in the video quality. Uh, but with this, everything looks reasonably the same. And again, it's of decent quality. Although I do think, having used the Find X5 Pro for the last couple of weeks, it could benefit from some updates because sometimes you get a couple of jitters with the image stabilization and it's not as smooth as the Oppo Find X5, or Find X3 Pro, sorry. And this is the 50 megapixel main camera. And again, autofocus. Now you can see you get a much bigger depth of field with the blur behind the subject, as you can see there on my hand. What I've noticed using this phone at night time I think there's some tweaks to be made to the software because there's a lot of focus pumping, especially in nighttime conditions. So I think some work needs to be done with that just to improve it. The Find X5 Pro has an improved optical image stabilization over the Find X3 Pro. And this uses a five axis image stabilization method to give you improved stability, especially for photography. Not so much a video because the electronic stabilization takes over from that in these conditions. So here's the two times optical zoom camera at 4K60 and just doing some sideways shots here. You can see you get a nice depth of field behind this tree and the stabilization does a good job, even with sideways movement, of keeping everything reasonably stable. I was just going to show you the zoom. So look at this tree straight ahead. That's 10 times zoom. And that is the match you can do at 4K60. I believe with the optical zoom camera, it's probably pinching a bit off the main camera and just cropping in off that. Uh, but if I just go back to two times zoom, and that is decent enough quality for a relatively old sensor. This has been around for quite some time now. This started life with the OnePlus 7 Pro and has made its way into many products since. But I think for daylight conditions, this will suffice for 
the vast majority of people if it's a little bit limited in its zoom distance. Okay, so this is a slightly peculiar one. So you get ultra steady video just like you do on the X3 Pro, but now it's locked at 1080p at 60 frames per second. There's no option for 30. If you pop out the little banner and select 30 frames per second, it disables the ultra steady video. So you have to select 60 no matter what, and it's locked at 1080p. Now it's available for, for both the ultra wide and the main camera. And it's designed to give you just that extra little bit of stabilization when recording video. I will say that the stabilization is so good from the main camera uh, that this option seems a little bit redundant these days. But it's nice to have a choice and it does allow you just that extra bit of stabilization from when using the main video mode. If I just go for a quick run and this will illustrate how well this particular option works just to give you a bit less swing left and right when walking and keeping the image more stable on a going forward kind of basis if you get what I mean. So that's the ultra wide camera and here's the main camera using the ultra steady mode at 1080p 60 and once again go for a quick run And you can see that it keeps the image nice and stable going forward. And again, you don't get so much rock from side to side, I've noticed with ultra steady. So it does have some value, but I think the main camera mode does a decent enough job for this not to be that useful because you're limited with the resolution and you're stuck at the 60 FPS frame rate. But you let me know what you think. It's not just up to me to decide. And leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, so as well as the selfie camera, you can also use portrait mode on the rear camera. Now, once again, this is only supported at up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, you can select the level of bokeh. So this is a f2.8, so this is the default mode as soon as it's selected. And I think this is probably the best for the vast majority of people because it gives you a nice blurred background and good detail on the subject. But I just wanted to show it on a human face. I'll find something in a moment so you can see how it works on things like leaves and other things as well. So you can see even when trying to use it on something like this, there we go. You'll have to give it a bit of encouragement just by tapping to focus. But you can see it's got a nice depth of field and good detail, especially on the leaf there. But you do have to be careful with how you frame. And if you like what you see in your video, you can take a snapshot using the snapshot function of the camera. Now there's two different views available. So you can use the main camera like this. Now I may be super cropped in on this, but you can use the telephoto camera as well for a much more pronounced effect on the portrait mode. Now I'll see if I can find a subject so I can just spin the phone around and show you how it works with the zoom camera. So if I turn around and focus on this leaf here, It does seem to struggle to get a focus on it. And because it's only 1080p, there you go. So you get a nice blurred background because it's only 1080p and this zoom camera is not quite the best. Then the actual sharpness of the video is a little bit lacking compared to some rival handsets. But with a little bit of work, I think this would look really good. So there's the portrait options on the main and also the zoom camera using the rear lenses. You let me know what you think so far. And finally, to finish things off, we've got this dual view video option. Now this records video at 1080p at 30 frames per second for both the front camera and the rear main camera. Now, when I tap on the screen, you can also zoom in on the main camera so you get a 
different viewpoints. So if I do this, you can see the trees around me here. And this is also customizable. So this is just one of the options available. So that one was called Oblong. This is round. So I've been abducted and stuck into a little bubble up on the left hand corner of the screen. And then that allows me to see the surroundings from the rear camera in a more expansive view. And once again, I can use the zoom camera if I need. And finally, there's this split screen option. So it splits it straight down the middle to give it a more of an even view left to right. I can see this has some value for people who like their vlogging with their smartphones. It's quite bright now, the sun. But I think they'll probably upgrade this later on so it'd be like 4K video from both the front and rear cameras. But for now, this is what you get and it's 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it's quite a neat feature to have if this is something you'll find some value from. All right, so that's the end then of the Oppo Find X5 Pro Ultimate video test. Hope you enjoyed this look through all of the features of Oppo's new flagship device. And if you've got any comments or questions about everything you've seen in this video, then please do let me know down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so that there's more content like this coming on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my ultimate video test for the Oppo Find X5 Pro. My name's Dave West, and I'll catch you guys later.